Youth, they say, are the leaders of tomorrow. And when the youth help governments to help the society, such a country will be a better place for all to live. And I want to start this week's program on the basis of this quotation. Uh, last week, we talked about prevalence of uh, internet fraud among youth. What are the PR solutions? And this is going to be the continuation of what we discussed last week. I have my guest in the studio, Mr. K. Budero, the fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, his PR consultant, and managing director CEO of PR Primus. He's a veteran PR practitioner. You welcome this week to the program, sir. Glad to meet you again. I also have a public analyst and social influencer, Mr. Babatuli Adiluola, a young Nigerian who believes that cybercrime is also a crime, a criminal activity. You are welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And I'm glad to let us know that to have an essay on youth empowerment and job creation to the governor of Ogun State, Mr. Otola Adiola, you are welcome this week, sir. Thank you again for having me, sir. Now, let me start from Mr. Kekudero. Uh, last week, we, we talked about the genesis of cybercrime in the society and the uh, causes uh, of, of, the, of this uh, uh, social menace. Sir, let, let me ask you this question. Uh, most of these youth who engage in these uh, know that there are laws that should be checkmating the activities of uh, cyber criminals. Uh, we, we have various uh, uh, government uh, security agencies and the one that is saddled with the responsibility of checkmating these activities, uh, EFCC, that is Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Are these bodies, or this particular body, EFCC, doing enough to checkmate cybercrime in the society? Well, uh, you have asked uh, the right question. Are they doing enough? Of course, within their limits, they are doing what they think is best for the situation. But when you look at the Development in the society, uh, they are not getting their acts right. Mm. We, must, we must be serious about it. Mm. And why do I say so? New laws are coming in to ensure that the checkmate, cybercrime, and other fraudulent activities. But are we following protocol? Are sense? we doing proper investigation? Mm. Mm. Are we doing proper monitoring? of all these people who are coming up with such activities. For example, a young guy who is unemployed and who believes that uh, he must uh, find a good means of uh, getting rich, it is left for the government to track such a person. There, there must be technology. But beyond that, even the law enforcement agents, they are overbearing at times. Mm. What caused the answers issue? Agree that the fraudsters. It is incumbent on these security agencies to do a thorough check on everyone. Let me go to Mr. Adil Ola now. Uh, going by his submission, uh, a young Nigerian was uh, arrested last year by nickname Osh Porti. And many Nigerians, millions of Nigerians were following him on Instagram. Many of them may know, they knew actually that he is a fraudster. Don't you think Nigerians who don't engage, young ones who don't engage in fraudulent activities also encourage them, maybe morally? Because if you see his followers on, on, on Instagram, they are predominantly youths. And now the guy is in one of the United States prisons. What message do you have for such youths who believe that this guy is a fraudster and they still follow him? They follow him, they even encourage him, you know? So what, what do you have to say on this? Number one, the solution is has to be analyzed holistically because it, it, you can't just take it from the social media mm. angle. The, co the family, the community, religious organizations, mm. and the country and the government as a whole must work together to solve this menace because it, it has gotten so bad that male, it doesn't even respect gender anymore. In those days, maybe two, up, up until two, three years ago, mm mostly maybe 99 or even almost 100 percent of people involved in cyber crime were male were guys <laughs> now you have female involved it doesn't respect age any longer wow. 
you have people as young as 12 years old in secondary school, in GS1, GS2, GS3, involved in as, this. As bad as that. It, as bad, it is as bad as that now. Hmm. So the country must actually begin to see it as a serious problem. Because in the next couple of years, we won't be able to handle the results. Because there will be an uncontrollable set of Nigerians who have grown confident hmm. in doing crime. That is the challenge that government must embrace and try to solve. Because the, problem, the government is really that arm of society that can put all of us mm. in check via laws. Mm. 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 For, and then the error that some of us make is that it's actually not the EFCC that is in charge of solving such crimes. There's a special fraud intelligence unit of the Nigerian police, SFIU. Mm. Under which they have the cyber crime units as well, they're actually meant to, to, to investigate in this. Yes, mm. such crimes. They, they, they have the, we, believe, we, have, we believe they have the, techn the technology and the know how and the manpower so. to solve cyber crime. <laughs> All right, but thank you. Not another problem. Is, is okay. I want to take you on where you ended. Okay. Uh, you talk about the society and what have you. Um, uh, I don't want to mention the name of a particular town and the state. But we read from the news that uh, some time ago we have an as association of mothers of Yahoo boys mm -hmm. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, which means that uh, parents also contribute to the menace in the society. Mm -hmm. Aside from parents, even security agents know the we are the, the supposedly headquarters mm -hmm. in Nigeria mm -hmm. as a youth who believes that there should be empowerment of Youth, what should the government do? Parent also has a role to play in this. So let's focus primarily the attention of uh, parents on this. What should be the role of parents who encourage their, their, their children to engage in this? So um, Because they enjoy from the soccer. Mm, exactly. So I'll take it from a particular angle that is, I want to believe is uncommon. Mm. You see, um, I used to say something that in my office, when myself and my immediate boss are discussing the next line of action. I would say that our people are too poor to be idle. Mm. I don't know if you understand that. And most of the parents right, that are poor is not lack of work or say job mm. that has made them poor. Some of them worked, they were, they were working class parents and they were still perpetually poor. Mm. Now, the society, Nigeria as a whole, has evolved in a way that everything is monetized. Mm. The success of a family, the success of a politician, the success of a businessman, the success of a pastor, the success of whoever, before you can even become a traditional ruler, you must exhibit that you have financial muscle. Mm. Now, what that means is that in practical terms, mm. it means that every means available to gather immense wealth and show the community that you have it mm. to be relevant or be seen as a family that is in quote successful mm. people encourage and embrace it so what it means practically is that those parents i want to believe and i'm not speaking for them mm. those parents have thought of their generation as we were poor so, right oh so if this is the person that will take us out of the bondage of yeah and they make us something in the society mm. so it comes back to, or begs the question of what are the value system that we run how do we begin to and i will say again celebrate those people mm. that have legally made a living right how have we begun to say okay viola today is an essay it's not by virtue of the fact that he had amassed more money and mm. he had bribed some people his way to be, so, mm. right? Do you get so we can begin to reward those work, those little things that young people do and put them in position where they can influence others. Mm. If we do not do that, mm. if we do not do that across board, the parents, the home, the church, mm. who do you make as a youth leader in the church, in your organization, in the mosque? Mm. Who is the, the community youth leader? like that who is being awarded who is being celebrated mm. if we do things like that if we encourage more of that yeah. 
I believe that those that does legal things that I engage in, they would hide. Let me say this: that I used, I grew up here in Abia Kutaga. If you are in a monitata, in a relationship, for a long time, a lot of people were scared or ashamed of that profession because a lot there is a lot of vice attached to the profession. So you can't come out and you know okay. say that I'm, I'm, I'm proud I'm, to be. I'm, I'm proud to be. So how mm. do we then isolate those people who, that are in into you know illegal crimes? And if you check again, mm. let me just say this, and I think we are discussing this because I came with my brother, David, and then we are discussing that before we know what is happening, there are already some industries we have in the country today that has been governed indirectly mm. by internet fraud. Wow. And proceeds of internet fraud. Because, wow. yeah, it is the process of that you know, that keeps the demand and supply mm. of that industry going. Going, wow. That's a, that, that's, that, that's, so, that's a big information. Yeah, so if we do not, before we know what is happening, mm. in the next few years, you will realize that the set of young people you see in the position of power mm. would be young people that are into this. And it is happening already. Wow. All right. Prevalence of uh, internet fraud among youth in the society PR solution is what we are discussing on your image today. I'm really, I'm really happy this is coming from youth uh, who believe that you can be successful in life without involving yourselves in cybercrime or any crime whatsoever. Uh, let me go back to Mr. Akudero now. I think we have listened to these young men yeah, who, are, who, are, who have spoken intelligently on how to guide against things. Now, I want us to do a comparative analysis between our country and other countries of the world. Are we, how far are we going? Have we done better? Are we fearing better in terms of checkmating this? Seriously, let's take a holistic approach yeah, to this. My brother said that uh, the best way to engage the youth is to study them with their responsibilities. Mm. I happily agree with him. Mm. And I said that is the difference between this country and some other countries, particularly in the Western world. Uh, at the tender age, they were identified to grow their interest, to grow their skills. And such challenges were harvested. And that's why you have great nations like China, uh, you have uh, even in uh, Malaysia, even in uh, Singapore, and some other countries that, have, that are tech savvy, you allow them to go their interest, and the country encourages them, equip them, put them on platform. Our youth, I say, are always very enterprising. They need to be engaged in, in skill acquisition. And I thank God that uh, the essay on the job creation is talking about that. We want to see more. We want to see more of the hubs in local governments, in senatorial districts. Mm. Then you have an array of youths creatively engaged who will even innovate to the surprise of the state. And what does a country or a state benefits from. It is the creativity of an individual. Mm. You are able to turn little things into sources. And the moment you do that, you have good, mm. you have business development, you have a space for mentorship, mm. you have a lot of activities that if we even earn money for the government of that nation. Number two, let's look at uh, the era where we are glamorizing fraud. Mm. It's common nowadays. You see some of our artists singing Yahuze and all that. Uh, you hear uh, in Kemowo mm. talking about uh, a chop uh, a dollar or something. I mean, how do you do that? Why will... And I want to be a billionaire. Yeah. Why will even the agency who is producing such music, why must they allow it? It should have been censored. Of course, people will say freedom of uh, speech, freedom of... But whatever that is going to be detrimental to the growth of a nation, mm. that is going to create moral decadence, we shouldn't encourage such. 
Number three, what is the problem in Nigeria? The problem in Nigeria is that people are not given the freedom to showcase their talent. If you give freedom to individuals, even entrepreneurs, you fund them, you create structures that will encourage them to be more innovative. The moment you do that, you will see less of all these crimes because people have a new focus of achieving more. But for as long as we depend on illicit ways of making money, then we cannot make it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Deleola. Yeah, that, that was uh, a video that went viral some time ago about a young man who was caught by the police and he was uh, unraveling how he was uh, tapping people's uh, mm. SIM cards mm. and the guy and narrated it intelligently. And some people argue that these guys and others who indulge in the criminal activities, I mean fraud, uh, internet fraud, should, people, government should gather them together and probably turn them to be, to be better people and use them also to cope further criminal activities. Will you agree with this school of thought? It takes um, a certain level of intelligence to commit internet fraud. Mm. That is, you need some basic knowledge, knowledge and basic skills, analytical skills, technical skills mm. to be able to, and then maybe days and nights of, <laughs> of trying and trying. In other clients, it is done, mm. where the government actually brings, they bring those kind of people into their fold, they employ them into, sometimes in the security network, the CIA, FBI, and o other places like that. And even companies, tech companies, Google and mm. Microsoft, are actually built around such people. So, such people are identified one way or the other, either at school or when law enforcement actually goes after them and apprehends them and then they go after them, they, they negotiate with them, okay, if you can tell us how you did this, mm -hmm. we'll compensate you, we'll reduce your sentence. But in Nigeria, <laughs> the difference is we don't, we hardly even apprehend those people in any case. Wow. We hardly, so everybody is com comfortable and confident in committing crime. And they believe that even if they commit crime, they can always pay their way out. Mm -hmm. So until we put a system that one discourages and like um, the SA has said, encourages positive income earning okay. and then celebrates those kind of people. Now, there's a saying that that goes that one a drop of a drop of garbage mm. in a drum of juice mm. is a drum of garbage. Mm. So one Nigerian um, putting our reputation in disrepute yeah. all over the world is like the whole of Nigeria <laughs> is bad. <laughs> I can tell you for a fact that we have more people, mm. more youth, youth making a living legally mm -hmm. than we have Those people are, uh, involved with cyber crime. Mm. But it just seems that everywhere you go, you are seeing a cyber criminal, you are seeing someone who is into illegal duties being celebrated mm -hmm. and you asked a question the other time that why do they go into places and, and they want to be noticed mm -hmm. it shows that there's a deep need for acceptance because they know what they are doing is actually mm -hmm. not good and but they want society to accept them then, ooh, acceptability they need they, they need it for self-justification wow all right thank you very much let's see now let, let me ask this and i want to be specific in my question most of these financial crimes are done in connivance with financial agencies like banks. Absolutely. They can't, they, they can't do certain transactions without banks and without knowing people there. Mm -hmm. Don't you think something is wrong somewhere? And it's a group of people in our financial institutions who also have hands, who, who, who collaborate with you know, these people to, to commit these crimes. Yeah, 100%. And I think um, more recently, we have seen we have seen um, the financial regulatory agencies mm. you know, flagging accounts 
with the advent of BVN and all that to check, okay, a lot of people have been called to come and explain certain transactions. But as, is, as, as has been said by you know, the two other guests, mm. the truth is that the rot is not just within the cybercrime ring, mm. right? So we have to broaden it to discuss the corruption in, you know, also in the banking sector and also our reward system. So if a bank has, um, has more uh, contract staff that probably ends in peanuts mm. right, and it sees an opportunity of a young person that has made illegal money, mm. right, would put a call through this such a person, find a way to ensure that that person gets his money out, mm. right, through the, you know, there is a ring, it's always a network. Yeah. So when people yearn for more, mm. right, when people want to, talking about, you know, urgent success mm. that we discussed, like arriving early, like we want to make it, yes. and then make it very, very mm. fast. Mm. So the ring is beyond just guys that are that perpetrate the hack it goes into the banking sector the security agencies that's supposed to mm. and then you know that's why really in nigeria said it is not like cyber crime is peculiar to nigeria mm. i think yeah. it is the volume here if you go to countries like the uk they will tell you that pakistanis mm. are you know are, you know, are engaged in internet fraud and you know card uh, credit card fraud and all that more than nigerians mm. but the fact that Nigerians have seen it mm. in court as an occupation, a lot yes. of people are going into it. <laughs> so the number of people that are, you know, in in, in that in, in court sector mm. of crime has made it, um, you know, what it is today. Mm. So what we can only call for is that let the law, mm. let's have you know program, pre hour programs like we used to have. Um, what's the name of this program on on on, on NTA that um, that we watch on every Sunday? Is this that talks about crime? Um, crime fighter, crime fighters. Okay. Where, where, we, okay. where okay. the law has mm. indeed arrest, mm. they have arrested some people mm. and they show the ring. Let's do proper investigation like mm. the touch mm. Everybody that was involved in rounded up and then they, but we don't do that here. Uh, all right, in, in few seconds, what is your take home on this show? What advice do you have you know, for young Nigerians who are watching us? A few seconds, please. Well, I'll say again. Um, cyber crime, internet fraud, Yahoo, Yahoo, at whatever level is, is a crime, is criminal. So the only thing I also had to what I've said probably last week is that there is a process. Okay. Mm. The only thing that I would say to young people is that follow the process, believe that an opportunity is coming and be prepared for it. Thank you very much. A quick one, Mr. Adeliola. Nigerian youth should believe in themselves. You don't have to be engaged in crime to make it in life. There are many other ways, legal ways, to make a success of yourself. Thank you. And finally, to Mr. Kekunde, our no, fellow. A, a, a piece of advice to all of us, all the stakeholders involved with this uh, menace, mm -hmm. is that we should do a thorough examination of ourselves. Are we morally bankrupt? If we are, we should retrace our steps. Let's follow diligence. Let's follow good ways, positive attitude of doing things in life. And let every system be made to work. That's my advice. All right. Thank you very much. And that's how far we can go on this week's edition of your image, Prevalence of Internet Fraud Among Youth in Society, Public Relations Solution. I want to say a very big thank you to my guest, Mr. Kekudero, fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Publications, PR Consultant, and NBCU PR Primer. Thank you very much for being thank part you. of this thank show. Thank you. It's been a great time. Yeah. yeah thank you very much. So I want to thank Mr. Babatu Di Alilu, Allah, public analyst and social influencer. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And our SA to the Governor of Ogun State on Youth Empowerment and Job Creation, Mr. Odetola Abiola. Thank you so much. Thank you again for having me, sir. Until we meet next week for another well packaged edition of Your Image. To Nigerian youth watching us, let's be good ambassadors of Nigeria. God bless you. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.